associate consultant with the Integrated Institute of Professional Management. And uh, today I am talking, I'm going to talk about one of the most fundamental aspects of emotional intelligence, and that is self-motivation. Self-motivation is something that a lot of people need, but do not have. It is one positive step towards getting solution to many problems. But unfortunately, a lot of persons are drowning in various serious problems when all they need that to stay afloat, do the right thing, achieve their aim or get the job done is self-motivation. Sadly, some people have actually drowned in self-defeat. And you will agree with me that the number of persons who have resorted to suicide as a, as a way to escape the challenges of life is really becoming alarming. So if you're facing any challenge in life, whether big or small, economic, social, emotional, physical, uh, financial, self-motivation plays a very key role in helping to stay afloat and then giving you the strength and determination to swim to safety. Now in this class, we're going to consider, we're going to discuss what self-motivation is, the importance of self-motivation, steps to self-motivate. We'll talk about self-confidence, self-determination, the can-do attitude, visualization and success. And lastly, the difference between self-motivated and a non-self-motivated person. Okay, so without further ado, we are diving into motivation. But to begin, I'd like to tell you a very short story. It's the story of a little boy who had a problem with his heart. This boy had gone through a series of treatments and uh, everyone was gradually losing hope. His parents were particularly eager to try everything because he was the only child, but nothing seemed to be working. And in fact, the doctor at the point told his parents that he had just two more weeks to live. Now, just a few days to the end of the two weeks period, they heard about a doctor from India who could perform an open heart surgery and correct the problem. And the news brought hope to the parents and of course to the boy. They contacted the surgeon, but then the surgeon told them that he would only be available for the surgery in a month's time as he had several other cases to attend to. And the boy's condition was very delicate and so it wasn't advisable for him to fly down to India. This boy believed that all he had to do was see the doctor and he was going to be fine and so he held on. At the end of the two weeks, surprisingly, he didn't die. He kept saying to anybody who asked him, hey, how are you? Um, the doctor is coming in June, and after the surgery, I'll be fine. Okay, so June came, and on the day the doctor was supposed to fly in, there was a very heavy downpour that resulted in the cancellation of all flights for that day. As soon as the boy heard that the doctor would be unable to come on that day, he lost hope. When he lost hope, he totally lost it, and his parents sadly lost him on that very day. Now, this short story reminds us that self-motivation is tied to faith, and faith is said to be the assured expectation of what is hoped for. It is the evident demonstration of realities that are not seen. So self-motivation is the first step pushes us to keep moving, to keep going on. It's that internal, that, that, that internal drive to achieve, produce, develop, and keep moving forward. So when you think you're ready to quit something or you just don't know how to start, your self-motivation is what pushes you to go on. I'm sure you've probably heard about a story similar to the one I just narrated right now before. Okay, if you have, please share your thoughts. If you haven't or you think it's strange that self-motivation is related to hope and faith, you could also share your thoughts. But I'd like us to know that um, 
we are really going to learn a lot in this class. At that point where you no longer feel the need or the desire to keep moving, that point where you feel hopeless and in total despair, the negative desire to quit sets in. Now, the aim of this class is to remind you that there is hope. There is always a reason to keep pushing. There's always a reason to keep trying. The only way you can achieve your, your goal is when you tell yourself, I can do it. Now, for you to have this positive affirmation, you need self-motivation. Now, what is self-motivation? So motivation starts with motivation is an effect process within an animal or an individual that causes that organism to move towards a goal. Motivation is an underlying process that initiates, directs, and sustains behavior in order to satisfy physiological and psychological needs or wants. Motivation determines the direction, intensity of behavior, and efforts and helps in sustaining that direction and intensity over time. Motivation is an integral element in becoming successful in any undertaking. Motivation has also been defined as a desire or need which directs and energizes behavior that is oriented towards a goal. Okay. All right, so um, having said that, I would like us to participate in an activity now. Close your eyes. That is if you are not on the road. <laughs> Close your eyes and think about that thing that you so desperately want to achieve. Is it getting your dream job? Or is it wooing that lady that you have a crush on? Or could it be that you desperately need to su successfully complete your tax or project? I don't know what exactly it is. It's going through your mind right now or that thing your mind is talking to you about right now, but whatever it is, start by believing in yourself that you can do it. Be convinced that you can do it. And write in the chat room, I can do it. So if you're listening to us on Facebook or on YouTube, please participate in this class. You have to start by having that affirmation, positive affirmation, I can do it. And you can write it so you, you initiate that start, starting point of telling yourself, convincing yourself that you actually can do something right. But then here is a disclaimer. <laughs> Please do not engage in unrealistic activities or expect unrealistic results because we told you in emotional intelligence class that you can achieve your goals when you tell yourself that you can do it. <laughs> this is a disclaimer, okay? Whatever you need to do or you're telling yourself you can do, make sure it is realistic. Do not engage in unrealistic um, activities and expect to have uh, a good, um, a positive result, okay? Having a realistic expectation is a product of high, intel high emotional intelligence. Now, let me repeat that because I really need you to understand this. Having a realistic expectation is a product of high emotional intelligence. In the last diet, I related a personal story, and I'm sure that a lot of people can relate to it. Uh, when I graduated from the university, I was uh, I weighed uh, 60 kg for my height and age. It was very appropriate, and I was happy. Story changed when I went for youth service. <laughs> youth service. I was sent to Bingley State. For those of you who know Bainway State here in Nigeria, you will agree with me that it is indeed the food basket of the nation and your favorite food is yam. I don't know if anybody who is in this class right now or who is listening to us right now is from Bainway State. Bainway people are really very wonderful people. So my primary assignment was in a place called Castina Allah. 
it was in the College of Education, and I was given yet another assignment in um, Benue State University to lecture. Now, here is the problem I had. At the end of every month, the students would both from the College of Education and um, Benue State University would bring me two bags of yam and um, other produce from their farm. And I was really enjoying the hospitality and attention. It felt really nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Before I knew what was happening, I was having fried yam for breakfast, porridge yam for lunch, and pound yam for dinner. As a matter of fact, everyone came with yam. So imagine having yam with combination like everything you can ever think about. <laughs> so I found myself eating heavy carbohydrates back to back. And because of the various activities I got engaged in, I never, I never had the time for exercise. I was the president of Nigerian Red Cross Society and vice president for the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. So after every CBS, I and my group members will go and eat pounded yam and this very delicious soup they call genge soup. Then we'll now wash it down with palm wine. So in my mind, in my, in my head, I was having the best time of my life. <laughs> But after service, I went back home and I tried some of the beautiful dresses I left behind. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. You, you know, you really can have each other kick and still, they, they actually fit. I rushed to check my weight and it was a whopping 85 kg. <laughs> From 60 kg to 85 kg in just one year. I couldn't believe my eyes. I knew I had to do something, but what could I possibly do to lose 25 kg? I mean, where do I start from? For the first time, I began to see myself differently and how much I had changed. And, and every time I looked at myself in the mirror, the person I saw staring back at me was the person I didn't want to be. I must tell you that losing weight is not easy at all for both men and women and this is one of the places where self-motivation comes in now we're going to look at the three elements of motivation motivation is built on three basic elements one motivation starts with a need vision dream or desire to achieve the seemingly impossible. Creativity is associated with ideas, projects, and goals, which can be considered the path to freedom. Develop a love to learn, become involved with risky ventures and continually seek new opportunities. Success is based on learning what works and does not work. Okay, now, so, um, <laughs> You have heard the, you, you, you have to have a need and a desire to achieve something first. And this is what would motivate you to create ideas to succeed. Remember that whatever you believe becomes your reality. Whatever you believe becomes your reality. You need to remember that. And let me take that again for emphasis. Whatever you believe becomes your reality. So be believe or conviction is very powerful. You need to be careful the kind of things you believe in or what exactly you're convinced about. In my case, I was convinced that, you know, I could reverse the effect of my poor eating habit and in the course of motivating myself to achieve set goals or losing weight, I had to learn what works for weight loss and what does not work. It took a lot of hard work, self-control and determination to get started. It wasn't easy at all. The third element of um, motivation is developing the ability to overcome barriers and to bounce back from discouragement or failure. Achievers learn to tolerate the agony of failure. In any worthwhile endeavor, barriers and failure will be there. Bouncing back re requires creative thinking as it is a learning process. In addition, bouncing back requires starting again at square one. 
Well, honestly speaking, long truths eh? did not allow me to focus on achieving my goal. I kept falling into the temptation of eating sweet pizza, delicious shawarma. <laughs> very awesome ice cream, different flavors, and some other very super delicious junks. And when that happened, I feel discouraged, but you know, bouncing back and starting again at square one was something I never stopped doing. Now this brings us to positive and negative motivation. Positive motivation is born out of a high level of emotional intelligence. Positive motivation harnesses the power of positive thoughts and feelings to move you closer to your goal. This will lead you to the desire to succeed and the desire to succeed will drive you to your goal. What about negative emotion? Negative emotion is the product of a low emotional intelligence. It's associated with low self esteem and takes you away from your goal. So what that does is it puts in you a fear of failure and the fear of fear of failure moves you away from achieving your goals. Understanding the simple facts can help you to surmount the hurdles of, of um, motivation and these are external environments, understanding of self, perception of others, my ego states. All right, so we're going to start with external environment. For me, I would use me for an example. <laughs> it was the people around me telling me that, oh, you look more beautiful now that you're overweight, you know, your shape is now out, you can, you know, wear all kinds of clothes and look even more beautiful in it. And then there were there was another group of persons telling me to accept the new me and continue with my life. Your case may not just be the same as mine, but before the end of this class, you're going to see how, regardless of what your, your circumstance is, that you can actually effect a change just the way I did. And you can only do that if you effectively um, put in the principles that you're going to learn today in today's class, then you will see that regardless of the circumstance you're going through, the same principle that worked for me can also work for you. The next part, or the next hurdle to motivation is understanding of self. With the understanding of myself, it was clear to me that I was a bit at uh, 85 kg. For a person who is um, five foot and six inches tall, I mean, like, I felt that was terrible for my health. So I understood myself. I knew, first of all, that where I was was not where I wanted to be. The way I looked was not the way I wanted to look. I wanted to move from um, point A to point B. And so the realization that I needed to move was one hurdle to motivation I needed to surmount. Now, the third part is perception of others. Thinking about what, I mean, how others saw me and how I saw myself was very demotivating. The constant positive remarks to my negative condition or my overweight condition did not give me the motivation I needed to achieve my goal. I had to contend with that. <laughs> no, thinking about it right now makes me laugh. Now, the last part is my ego states. My confidence level, of course, dropped. It really dropped significantly. I became afraid of meeting people and even looking at myself in the mirror was something I did not look forward to at all. Someone might say, <laughs> now this story sounds exactly like how I got fat. Yeah, I know, I understand, <laughs> don't worry. Just pay attention and don't get distracted. At the end of the class, we'll see how we can reconcile your feelings right now and how mine back then <laughs> can um, work together to achieve something positive. Yeah, and then for others, it might just be that um, uh, you're just, uh, while you were busy attending to other things you consider to be more important in life, you probably lost sight of the things that truly mattered most. And before you realized it, boom, 
a lot of things had gone wrong. This class will help you set your priorities right and inspire you to do the right thing. And now that brings her to the subject of motive. What are motives? A motive is an internal state that energizes, activates, or moves and directs or channels behavior towards goal. Then we have classification of motive. We have the primary motive, secondary motive, general motive. Okay, in other words, uh, it is these different motives are the things that we need to set a goal. We have to start by making plans, then get to work, stick to it, and then reach your goals. Now let's deliberate on them one after the other. We start with primary motive. Primary motives are also known as physiological, biological, and learned motive. The criteria for a motive to be primary are that they should be unlearned and physiological. Primary motives tend to reduce the tension or stimulation. A few examples of primary motives are hunger, thirst, sleep, avoidance of things, and some others. Well, basically, Nobody learns how to be hungry. Nobody learns how to be thirsty or how to fall asleep. You don't learn those things. And this is because they are physiological. They actually come naturally. So when you talk about primary motives, what comes to mind are biological or unlearned actions. Next is the general motive. General motives are ones which are unlearned, but are not physiologically based. These needs induce the person to increase the amount of stimulation. A few examples of general motives are curiosity, manipulation, activity, and affection. Well, what this means is simple. Nobody learns how to be curious. Even the child knows how to manipulate his parents to give him attention, or in most cases, affection. And nobody teaches a child to do that. Have you ever seen children who cry for absolutely no reason? You, you give them food, they eat, the diaper is in wet, but they just look at you and they start crying. Sometimes out of frustration, you just ask them, what do you want? What is wrong with you? <laughs> and it might just be that what that child wants is for you to carry them, say some nice things to them, pat them on the back back so they, they can smile and probably just fall asleep. I don't know if that has happened to you before. Have you experienced that before with children? Or you've seen um, someone who is, you feel the person is very good with kids and, and then there is crying child who wouldn't stop crying. And then this person who you think is very good with kids comes around and pets the child, carries the child. And before you know it, the child has stopped crying and has fallen asleep. Please, if you know if this has happened to you before or you have experienced that before, let's, 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 let's interact in the chat room. You know, we said before that this class is a very interactive class. And I think I've been talking alone for a long time. I'm not even sure if, um, am I being heard? Please, if you can hear me, could you type yes in the chat room? I need to know that I'm not alone here. Please, could you type yes if you can hear me in the chat room? If you can hear me, please say yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, Mr. Michael. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Deji. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so this happens very, very often. All right, now um, children are not taught to be manipulative or how to seek attention. It comes to them naturally. So that is an example of general motive. What about the secondary motive? These are the ones, this is one of the most important type of motives while studying the behavior of, of employee motivation. The motive must be learned in order to be a secondary one. These drives are closely tied to the learning concepts such as 
motives for power, achievement, and affiliation. A few other secondary motives are security and status. Now, unlike the, the previous two we discussed, the general motive is learned, but the other two we, we talked about, um, they are not learned. You know, they are not learned, they come naturally. And then um, the secondary, um, the, the secondary motive is, um, is learned, so they're quite different, okay? It's, it is that deliberate step towards achieving something, like working hard to achieve power, greatness, build connection, stay secured, and get a higher economic or social status. Now, under the secondary motives, we have some key examples and these are need for achievement, need for power, need for affiliation, need for security, need for status. We're going to take this one after the other. Need for achievement. This involves doing better than competitors, attaining a difficult goal, solving a complex problem. If you are a runner, for example, the need to come first would motivate you, you know, to run faster than the other, other competitors. The need to, you know, to attain a difficult goal, motivate people to want to do extraordinary things so they can maybe break Guinness Book of Records or be respected for the heights they have attained or something like that. The need to solve complex problems is something, something else that motivates people to invent things and create solutions or to execute a great, brilliant business idea. What about the need for power? The need for power involves controlling people and activities, being in a position of authority over others, defeating opponents. That's the need for power. Some people enjoy having other people under them so that they can bust them around and stay at the top. They just enjoy being in position of authority over others because it gives them a certain level of joy and feeling of achievement or accomplishment. You know, it just, there's this very good feeling it gives to people who love to control others. You know, I don't know, by the way, do you know of anyone who is power intoxicated? Emotional intelligence will help you know how to manage this kind of persons. The next is need for affiliation. The need for affiliation is involved, involves being liked by many people, working with people who are friendly and cooperative participating in pleasant social activities. Everyone has this need. Personally, I'm hopeful that at the end of this diet, I will be able to have new friends with whom I could participate in social activities, networking and other upbuilding activities. So the need for affiliation is a secondary motive. What about need for security? It's involved having a secure job, having protection against illness and disabilities, avoiding risks, um, uh, avoiding tax or decision with the risks of failure and blame. Okay. Um, when you're not feeling well, no, no, not when you're not feeling well. When you are having um, some sort of symptoms like you're not sure if you're going to have uh, malaria. Most people get to take preventive medicine to ensure that they don't fall sick or they don't actually have malaria. Or maybe um, they just have to take some supplements to build their immunity, make them uh, more immune, stronger, multivitamins and all of that. They might not just be taking those things because they are actually sick. They take them because they need to protect themselves against falling sick. That is the secondary motive. It's an example of a secondary motive. Enjoying job security is the dream of many people. 
no one wants to work in a place where they are constantly working on eggshells and uh, and cannot and, and, and just can be fired for at any time for petty things such as something as ridiculous as smiling too much. Imagine if you're working in a place where maybe boss um, not happy and sack you, <laughs> having a terrible time, you know. It's, I mean, it's it's something that <laughs> a lot of people would need job security and not want to work in a place where they are not sure if tomorrow will be the last day they would work there. Healthy people strive to maintain um, good health and prevent themselves from falling sick, you know, so yes, we've talked about how they get to take a lot of medicines or supplement to stay healthy. To stay secured, most persons would rather avoid tax or decisions that would expose them to the risks of failure, so they end up remaining in their comfort zone because they feel that that is where they are more secured, so they just remain in their comfort zone. The last example here is the need for status. And this involves working with the right company in the right job, having a degree from the right university, having the right privileges. The prestige that comes from graduating from Harvard University, Stanford, Princeton University, or working in Shell or Chevron or NNPC, and having the right privileges drives people to do a lot of imaginable and unimaginable things. These are all examples of secondary motives. Now let's go straight to needs and wants. If you're going to, if you're going for certification at the end of this program, you'll be given the complete materials for uh, CEIP. So that way you can access the rest of the information need and want. Did you know that there's a huge disparity, a huge difference between wants and need? Did you know that it is highly possible that you want something almost desperately, but in truth, you probably do not need it. Did you know that? Okay, needs. Need is something you must have to succeed and thrive. Need is something you must have in order to survive and, and thrive. What about wants? Wants is something you can survive and thrive without. So if you want to decide whether something is a want or a need, you might just do it to ask yourself, self, Will I be satisfied after I get this? Or will I want something more? Am I hoping that this will boost my self-esteem? Am I hoping that this will take away a painful feeling such as loneliness, sadness, rejection, loss, or maybe emptiness? If something does not truly satisfy you physically or psychologically, it is probably a want, not a need. I'm going to take that last part again. If something does not truly satisfy you physically or psychologically, it is probably a want and not a need. This is very important. And um, it will be very helpful if you repeat this and register it in your subconscious so that you don't make the mistake of, um, of mistaking a want for a need or a need for a want. This is why sometimes you hear people use expressions like, I need you, when really they just want you because in truth, they can actually survive and thrive well and even breathe well without you. So, <laughs> Be careful how you believe the things people say, because interestingly, half the time, they don't even understand the gravity or the implication of what they say. 
still on issues of wants and needs. Let's say, for example, you are very, 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 very hungry. Now picture yourself on the table and you're pre presented with a jar of cookies, biscuits. And on the other hand, you have a plate of steaming hot real food. Now let's say it's um, hot eba and vegetable soup prepared with, oh, let me see, goat meat, stock fish, dry fish, pomo, shaki. Oh my God, I could go on and on. <laughs> and the aroma is out of this world. You perceive it and you're like, oh my God. <sighs> you can only have one, you can't have two. Now tell me, which of these two can satisfy you at this moment? The cookies or the eba I just described with that beautiful soup. Okay, now let me not go back to describing the soup again. I'm sure you all get the message. <laughs> you get the picture, right? Okay, now, so between that eba and the, and the cookies, the jar of cookies, please be honest in the chat room. Which one would you go for? Which one would you go for? I'm waiting to see your comments, please. This is an interactive class. I'll need to know if you were full if we are together. Are you going to go for biscuits or you go for a bath? Let's talk, please. I'm waiting. Let me get your response. What are you going for? Would you go for a bath or you go for or you go for the jar of biscuits? I think I've been all alone here. I will go for a bath. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, that's uh, Mr. Addison. Thank you very much. He said he will go for a bath with all the soup I just described, right? Ah, I agree with you. Oh, yeah, someone else is going for a bath. Egba, Egba Sorry if I got your wrong your name wrongly pronounced. Yes, yeah, so I will personally go for the eba because that soup is something that when you imagine a soup like that, you won't want to go for something else. Ah, <laughs> Mr. Deji, you'll go for a jar of biscuits. Really? <laughs> okay, but in truth, when you're really very, very hungry, you would want to go for something that would sustain you. You would like to go for something that will sustain you. And in all sincerity, a jar of cookies would not sustain you when you're hungry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Yeah, a lot of people will go for it, but Thank you. <laughs> all right, so uh, before you go after that thing you think you need, ask yourself, is this truly a need or is just this just a want would this thing i'm running after eventually satisfy my psychological or physiological needs if the answer is no or you are not so sure what really it is then it might just be a want so please be careful not to spend your time satisfying satisfying your wants to the detriment of your needs. Okay, we're going to go straight to, we're going to go straight to uh, Maslow's hierarchy. I'm sure we're all familiar with this guy called Abraham Maslow. I like to call him my uncle. <laughs> Okay, so Abraham Maslow is considered to be the father of humanistic psychology. He is famous for developing the hierarchy of needs theory in 1943. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory for human motivation. It is based on the assumption that there is a hierarchy of five needs within each individual. The urgency of these needs varies. Okay, we're going to consider these things one after the other. Maslow proposed that individuals are motivated by unsatisfied needs. 
as each of these needs is significantly satisfied, it drives and forces the next needs to emerge. Individuals move from lower level needs to a higher level needs. He proposed that only needs that are not yet satisfied can influence the behavior. Needs are arranged in the, in the hierarchy of importance and they follow a definite sequence. Okay. We'll consider that sequence soon. In the hierarchy need of, of need model, Abraham Maslow proposed five levels of need and grouped the, the five needs into two categories. And these categories are the lower order needs and the higher order needs. The lower and other needs are made up of the psychological and safety needs. These lower order needs are mainly satisfied externally, while the higher order need is different. Is the social esteem and self-actualization needs that make up the higher order needs. These higher order needs are generally satisfied internally within an individual. Well, basically, uh, Maslow is here stating that people are motivated to achieve certain needs and that some needs take pre precedence over others. Our most basic need is for physical survival. And this will be the first thing that motivates our behavior. Once that level is fulfilled, the next level is what naturally motivates us. Now let's take an example here that will help us understand Abraham Maslow's theory better. We'll take an example of a man in the village, let's call him Kevin. Now, Kevin enjoys uh, clean air in the village, fresh food, lives in his grandfather's mud house and you know, goes fishing from time to time, uh, maybe goes hunting or farming from time to time and was just happy. And then all of a sudden, Emeka, his relative just comes back from the city and shows them pictures of the street lights and the beautiful houses there and fast cars and you know beautiful life in the city and then suddenly Kevin realizes that he wants more for himself so he decides that he needs to journey from the village to the city and begins to and begin to hustle okay now he is in the city he's hustling he begins to he started by squatting with a friend, doing menial jobs, feeding and clothing himself until he was able to find a stable house and a better paying job. And so he leaves his friend's house and then went to rent his own apartment. And then he progressed to the next level of need. On this level, he struggles to ensure that his income is stable. He takes care of his health, his appearance, Kevin now looks good, he dresses corporately, he, 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 he moves into a bigger house, probably buys a car, and then he progresses to the next level. On this level, he realizes that oh, it's time to settle down now, get married and start a family. And he starts you know, working towards that. And then the next thing, he, he gets that done. He builds a network of friends or business associates with which he hangs out from time to drink beer, eat the pesu. I'm not really sure what men do when they hang out. <laughs> All right, let me concentrate on this. Okay, so this, this need is satisfied until he moves to the next. On this level, he desires to get a reputation or respect from others and generally make a name for himself so that when his name is mentioned, people will be like, ah, that man, hi, I know him. For example, when the name of Ted Olatsu is mentioned, people will always, you know, want to identify with him or want to say at least something about him because he, his name is, is a well-known name. So the ones you want to get to that status where when your name is mentioned, people will be like, yes, of course I know him. When the name Dangote is mentioned today, a lot of people, you know, they just know him. You don't need to start explaining who he is. When Bill Gates is mentioned, you don't need to explain who he is because he, he's a popular name. 
everyone already knows that. And so he, those names didn't just start all of a sudden. They built the name. They started from, some, from somewhere until they get to the point where the name is not just a national name. It's an international name and everybody knows it. Okay, so now he has gotten what he wanted. His name is known, at least if not international, his name is known on the local level, national level, and uh, then he moves to the, to the final level. Okay, on this level, I don't know if you noticed, we're actually on the self-actualization level now, okay? On this level, he begins to build, he begins to desire to accomplish everything he can and to become the most he can be. He starts to recount his achievements in life and enjoy telling stories of the good old days and all of that. At this stage, he now has seen it all. He has successfully done it all and nothing is new to him anymore. He feels fulfilled at this point. This story about Kevin is a summary of Maslow's theory of needs. If you understand what uh, we're discussing so far, if you understand this theory of needs, then you'll be able to know where exactly you are right now right now you'll be able to know where you stand are you somewhere in the physiological needs are you somewhere in the safety needs are you have you moved up to the social needs are you somewhere at the esteem need or you are at the self-actualization needs when you study this um, Abraham Maslow's theory of needs and then you put yourself in the picture it helps you to know where exactly you stand We will go to self-motivation. Self-motivation is the inspiration behind your behavior and action. It is a self-action to energize your mind. Tips for self-motivation. For you to motivate yourself, you need to start by dreaming. If you don't dream, then you can't, you can't motivate yourself. You have to put yourself in that picture, dream it. Then when, you, when you've thought about it, you've made that big picture, you've dreamt about it, you don't just leave it at that. You start by making concrete plans to ensure that your dreams are realized. When you have done that, you ensure that you have a positive attitude towards the concrete plan you have made to actualize your dream. When you're done with that, you sit back and start with small steps. You don't start with big steps. You don't start with giant strides because if you do, you might miss it. Start with small, small steps. When you do the small steps, please be aware that you're definitely going to have external forces, things that would want to set you back things that want to demotivate you, things that want to discourage you. What you need to do at this point is block those external forces. Another thing is you need to be consistent. By the time you've blocked off those um, external forces, you've started the small steps you need to take. You're, you have a positive attitude. You've created the, 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 you've made the concrete plans to actualize your dream, but you are not consistent. What do you think would happen? You're going to regress. You're going to regress. You will go back. You become demotivated. And before you know it, you, you have a lot of reasons why you should not continue. But consistency is something that you must employ to make sure that you move forward. And while you're doing that, you have to avoid procrastination. Procrastination is evil. It kills your dreams. Something you need to do today, procrastination will make you think about doing it tomorrow. So when you start by dreaming, you've gone through all the steps, you, you're somewhere at the point where you need to do something more. If it has to be done now, please do it now. By the time you keep putting it off, oh, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Ah, oh, I don't feel good today. Okay, how about tomorrow? What about next tomorrow? Before you know it, 
you would just stop doing it. You will not even continue because you have one million reasons why you should put it off for the next day and then the next day and then the day after. At the end of the day, it is not done. So, so avoid procrastination so you don't kill your dreams. And lastly, never quit. You're going to have a lot of ups and downs. You're going to have reasons why you fall. But when you fall, stand up. When you make mistakes, learn from it. Don't quit. So by the time you put all of these together, it helps you to, it helps to motivate you. It puts you on the right track towards getting things done the right way. Okay, so we would um, consider now the importance of self-motivation. We have discussed so far that self-motivation is key to actualizing your dreams. But why do you need to motivate yourself? Self-motivation is important in every aspect of your life, be it career, social life, relationship, health and fitness, spirituality, or personal development. First, you must find out what motivates you. Some people may get motivated by influential people, while some others might just get motivated by reading inspirational books or stories or poems, or even listening to some motivational songs, depending on what works for you. And then, um, they just try something that will make them move forward, something that will motivate them. You know, self-motivation is a more effective method. Reading motivational books will inspire you only temporarily. If you can motivate yourself, you do not need to depend on any external factors. If you can motivate yourself, you do not need any external factors. Self-motivation is the best inspirational technique. So you would need to ask yourself very important questions to be able to help you know why exactly you need to motivate yourself and how you would need to do that. So let's start with why strive to become self-motivated? Self-motivation is very important because it puts you in control. It doesn't put others in control. It puts you in control because you are the person who is motivating yourself. So it puts you in control. You would not have to wait for someone else to motivate you to be successful because you are the driver and conductor of your life, of how you want things to be. So you don't have to wait for someone to push you and say, oh yeah, now, please now, move ahead. Oh yeah, like that. No, you don't need that because you are the person controlling how you want things to be done, when you want it to be done, why exactly you want it to be done. So you don't wait for anyone else to motivate you to be successful. You would not be procrastinating and hence would face lesser stress by avoiding waste of time. By the time you're procrastinating and say, I'll do it today. No, 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 tomorrow is better. No, next tomorrow will be better. At the end of the day, you'll be wasting valuable time that would have been better used when you concentrate on doing what you need to be, what, what needs to be done at the time it needs to be done. So you need to avoid procrastination. Another reason why you should motivate yourself is because when you do that, you will feel better about yourself and you will no longer see yourself as a slacker because you are the one pushing yourself to do the needful. You won't, you won't have to feel guilty for not doing what you know you should do because you are the one motivating yourself. Now, this brings us to self-reflection questions. Self-reflection questions. If you're in a position that requires a change, you need to ask yourself these fundamental questions like what changes must be made by me and personalizing it you have to ask yourself these questions what changes must be made by me as an individual and not by other people me so that I can feel motivated what are those things I need to do so that I can feel motivated another question um, you can ask yourself is, 
what are the things that 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 I'm motivated to do? What are those things that I think about them and then I'm motivated to do them? Okay. And then what are the things that I want to do, but I'm not motivated to do that? What are those things? By the time you 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 put them down, you're like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, I have a list of the things that I really want to do, but I am not motivated to do them. I have to ask, I have to ask myself, what are these things? And then when I'm done asking myself what they are, I can now identify what really they are. The next question I should ask myself is, why am I motivated to do this ones first and this ones last? Why did I have to you know, put this one as a higher priority and the other one as a lesser priority? Why? These are self-reflection uh, questions that would help us know what exactly we need to do. So sometimes when you look at yourself, all you see are negative things about yourself. Do you see yourself as someone who, who is always late for everything or who, is, uh, who spends a lot of time on irrelevant things? You have to look at yourself and ask yourself how you fare when it comes to self-motivating. And then the, 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 then you, you write out those negative things you feel about yourself. What are those, those negative things you think or say about yourself on a daily basis? You could just write them down. And then when you do that, you turn it as a positive statement about yourself. Turn it as a positive statement about yourself. For example, you might say, uh, uh, I can, in place of, I cannot. You could say it is possible in place of it is not possible. Just be positive in your statement and reject the spirit of negativity. Essentially, you just have to change those negative statements about yourself and have positive ones come out of your mouth. When you look at yourself, instead of saying those negative things, interestingly, those negative things you might just say about yourself have a very interesting way of weighing you down because you are demotivating yourself by yourself. And so when it comes out from you, the, the effect is really very disastrous because you are the one inflicting that on yourself. So you have to take control of what comes out of your mouth in how you see yourself. Okay, so steps to self-motivate. Steps to self-motivate. I hope we're still together. Steps to self-motivate. Okay, so what are the steps that we need to take to motivate ourselves? The first one is get out of your comfort zone. Just leave your comfort zone. Be willing to go out of your comfort zone. The greatest barrier to achieving your potential is your comfort zone. Oh no, I think I'm okay here. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think I can move forward. I think, I don't, I think, I think, I think, I think at the end of the day, you're just where you are. And you know that the solution to your problem would be when you move from point A to point B, but then you're already too comfortable in that point A that you're unwilling to, to move out and make things happen. You need to break free from that barrier, that mental shackle that you can't move away from your comfort zone. By the time you do that, you're one step to getting what you really want. Great things happen when you make friends with your discomfort zone. So that means that you're looking at it, you know it's not very comfortable, but that is a solution to your problem. And so you try to work towards um, getting out of your comfort zone to face your fears and get things done. Another step to motivating yourself is what we have in number two, mistakes happen. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Wisdom. Have, wisdom helps us avoid making mistakes. And it also comes from making a million of them. Let me take that again. 
wisdom helps us to avoid making mistakes. And then it also comes from making a million of them. What that simply means is that you can only learn when you make mistakes. So that means that when you, when you make a mistake, you know that this, you got it wrong, and then it helps you to learn from what you did wrong. You immediately stand up and move. You just keep moving. You know that you can get things better if you do it differently. And so you set out on the right track. And as you're doing it, you see that you, you probably made some decisions or took some actions that didn't go well. And instead of letting that um, demotivate you, you stand up again, and then you decide to do the right thing this time so you can get the solution, you can get things right, and you know your aim is success, and you know that you'll never be successful if you fall and remain on the ground. You have to move. You have to get up and move. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Number three, stop limiting yourself. Don't indulge in self-limiting thoughts. I cannot. I don't think I can. I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't. No, stop telling yourself that you can't. Stop telling yourself that it's something that you, you just can't do. No, by the time you're telling yourself you can't do something, then psychologically you're caging yourself in a box. And that box will keep oppressing you because you have put yourself in that box by yourself. Think empowering, expansive thoughts instead, because those positive thoughts would help you to do what you should do. Four, be happy. Choose to be happy. Happy people are easily motivated, and happiness is your birthright. So don't settle for anything less. If you want people to successfully make you unhappy, you allow them to control your emotions. But if you are in control of your emotions, you don't let people, you don't let people make you unhappy because you can choose to be unhappy or be happy. You can choose to allow people affect your life negatively or positively or affect your, your emotions negatively or positively. So in place of allowing people to hurt you so bad that you, you lose your joy, you lose your happiness, don't allow that, choose to be happy. Step five, self-development. Spend at least one hour a day in self-development. Don't say, uh, I don't need to develop myself, I'm contented where I am. No, life involves continuous learning. The more you live, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you get to improve in yourself. You might need to read good books or listen to inspiring tapes so that you can develop yourself. And then um, driving to work can actually provide an excellent opportunity to listen to self-improvement tapes or when you're doing something and you just feel the need to relax, you could read some books that can give you more ideas on how you can develop yourself. Step six, finish what you start. Train yourself to finish what you start. Don't start something and then you drop it off and then give a million reasons why you can't continue. When you know that something has to be done and you get started, have it at the back of your mind that you need to finish what you started. Many of us become scattered as we try to accomplish a task. Finish one task before you begin another. Usually it is when you have multiple tasks all around that you get confused. A lot of things becomes complicated because you have a lot of them. You, you, you wouldn't get to finish one before you start with the other one. It makes life very complicated and really difficult. So start one, finish it, and then set up with another one. Step seven, live in the present. Live fully in the present moment. When you live in the past or the you aren't able to make things happen in the present. By the time you spend all your time the dreaming of how you want to be the boss in that company, how you want to own a huge house, how you want to buy the latest car or the most recent gadget, and you just spend your time dreaming and dreaming and dreaming, you get trapped in the, in the future. <laughs> that you will you'll be unable to accept the present, that you are somewhere where you need to work hard to get there. 
Or well, what about when you're trapped in the past and you're living there, you're like, oh, my life has been terrible. I'm feeling pity for myself. Look at me. Look at how my peers have gone better than me. And you're trapped in the past and you're feeling miserable and, and everything. You will be there and need to block your eyes from the reality of the present that you can actually move from where you are to where you want to be. Only if you stop thinking about those things in the past or you actually start making efforts to realize that dream that you have for the future. So don't get stuck in the past. And don't spend all your time dreaming about something in the future when you can actually work to get there. Number eight, never give up. Never quit when you experience a setback or frustration. Never, ever quit. Success could be just around the corner. So if you should just quit, and then you, 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 you decided, oh no, you know what? I quit, I'm no longer doing this and you just give up. You know, what you're telling yourself is that you can never get past um, a setback. So don't allow yourself to be in that position where you start to think that you cannot get past a setback. When that happens, learn from it and move on. Step nine, dream and dream big. Dare to dream big, okay? There's nothing wrong with dreaming. There's nothing wrong with dreaming at all. If there is anything to the law of expectation, then we are moving in the direction of our dreams, goals, and expectations. So the problem is when you dream and then you don't do the needful to realize your dream, and then you just spend your time dreaming and dreaming, and then you're not taking action. That is the problem. But dreaming in itself is fantastic because it helps you know, it's, it helps you understand that you want to achieve something. And then it puts you in that psychological uh, position where you have, to make, um, you have to make it happen, where you have to take the steps to make it happen. So dream, it's okay to dream. Step number 10, live life to the fullest. The real tragedy in life is not how much we suffer, but rather in how much we miss. So don't miss a thing. Don't miss a thing. Charles de Bois once said, we must be prepared at any moment to sacrifice who we are for who we are, for who we are capable of becoming. Okay, that is pretty deep. We, we must sacrifice who we are for who we are capable of becoming. So if you know that you're capable of becoming um, a good um, businessman, uh, whatever it is, then that means that you have to sacrifice your comfort zone. You have to work harder. You have to stop living petty um, lifestyle. You have to be more serious, focused, and dedicated to get what you want. All right, so that means that we would need to take action. I don't know if any of all these um, steps to motivate makes any sense to you. If it does, please type yes in the chat room or in the comment section of Facebook or wherever you're listening from. But if you don't think it makes sense to you, please let us know. These steps, please, do they make sense to you? Do they make sense to you, these steps to motivate yourself? Thank you very much, Mr. Abraham. Thank you. Okay. They are. They are very encouraging. Thank you. So much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Ifi. Thank you so much. Yes, these steps are very, very important. And then when we consider them, it's going to help us to do what we must do. Okay. We're moving forward. We need, to, we need to move. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, I, I just explained earlier that um, if you're going for certification, of course, you're going to have this. Um, you're going to have this, and so you can study it, especially the parts that we have skipped. Okay. So, I'm going to talk right now about self-determination, self-determination. 
What is self-determination? Self-determination refers to the natural desire of most people to be in personal control of their own thoughts, feelings, and behavior. It begins shortly after birth and continues throughout life. It is determined by the skills, beliefs, and attitudes, and knowledge as well as opportunities to exercise personal control. All persons have the desire and are capable of some degree of self-determination. Okay, and all of this falls under the self-determination, but it, the important thing right now is that we need to ask ourselves um, questions that would help us know what we need to do, how we need to go about self-determination. But first off, uh, how important is this self-determination? Why exactly is it important? Self-determination is important because it increases the motivation. It encourages social acceptable behavior, motivates self-awareness, it decreases responsibility, enhances learning, encourages a sense of personal control, enhances independence and interdependence, improves self-esteem, encourages individuals to create a vision, enhances quality of life, enhances inclusion, promotes self-advocacy, and develops decision-making skills. These are the importance of self-determination. Please note this point down because they'll greatly help you to improve yourself if you apply them. Now, let's take a look at this, ways to self-improvement. First off, you need to take action to improve your self-image. How do you see yourself? How do people see you? If you're not comfortable with how you see yourself or how people see you, you must take steps to improve yourself. Have a good dress sense, smell nice, work smartly and confidently and always arm yourself with a disarming smile. You can't see me right now, but I'm smiling and it works for me 100% of the time when it is used. So you can try it often, you can try. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, this is one of the first things you notice about me when you meet me in person. I smile a lot. Um, number two, practice acts, uh, of acts of kindness for others and feel good about yourself. People are naturally drawn to kind people. There's this good feeling you get when you're responsible for the happiness of another person. It makes you happy. You should try very often so you can experience the joy that comes from giving. Three, avoid comparison with others. Never, ever compare yourself with others. Never compare your achievements or accomplishments, your challenges or, or, or setbacks with that of others. When people tell you about their, their problems, their worries or concerns, be a good listener. Don't, don't, don't start offering solutions when you haven't gotten all the details or facts. And again, avoid boasting about having more problems than the other person. It's not a good move towards having a good image. Four, find a mentor. There must be someone who has achieved that goal you are trying to, to have or struggling with. Find that person, reach out to him or her if you, if you can, or read about such persons and then allow his or her experiences to guide you in achieving your personal goals. This help you. Number five, set and work to accomplish achievable goals. If your goals are not real, then you can never be achieved. They, they, they can never be achievable. If you have achievable goals, but you don't do what you should do to achieve it, it will be a huge waste of time setting them in the first place. Six, acknowledge compliments and feel good. Acknowledge compliments and feel good. When people compliment your good looks, your personality, the professional way you carry out your tasks and projects, don't always feel like, like they are all flattery or they are lies. Acknowledge them and strive to do even better. What those compliments mean that people are observing you, whether actively or passively, they are observing you. So again, don't forget that self-improvement is a continuous activity. It's a very continuous activity. Just keep improving yourself. Do not accept put-downs by others and don't allow anyone look down on you. 
when you accept people belittling you, making you feel in, incompetent or making you feel like you can't succeed without them, mentally you get caged into that box and you will never be able to see yourself as an achiever. If you're in this class and someone is making you feel that way, it is time to break free from that mental bondage. If you're listening to me right now and you feel that somehow someone is putting you in a mental box, someone is putting you in a, in a, in a position where you are now looking down on yourself because they are looking down on you. You have to start by breaking free from that mental bondage. It might not be easy to stand up to emotional bullies, trust me. It could be very difficult to stand up to emotional bullies. But if you set your heart to it, you can achieve success. Again, try avoid being pessimistic or hang around negative people. It's a no-no. It's a horror no-no. Be optimistic and carve a niche for yourself of people with positive vibes. It is said that bad associations falls good habits. So if you are optimistic, but your friends are pessimists, before long, you begin to, to think like them or talk like them. So you, you have to be careful the kind of persons you make friends with because they can either make you or break you. Association is very powerful. I'm sure you agree with me. So think about the people you have right now as your friends. Are they contributing positively to your life? Are they dragging you back? Are they encouraging you? Are they supporting you? What kind of friends do you have? Think about it. If they are the kind of people who are not helping you, it might just be the best time to break free from that niche and carve out the niche of positive thinkers, go-getters, achievers, people who want to move from where they are to another and then they're doing the right things, not the wrong things, they're doing the right things get there. You might just need those kind of people to inspire you to do better. Model the person you want to be and change your self-talk. When people ask you the simple question, how are you? Do you find yourself saying, hmm, I'm managing all, I'm suffering and smiling all, I'm patching all. <laughs> Speak positive things into your life and let people hear you say positive things too. Remember that we said earlier that whatever you believe becomes your reality, right? Whatever you believe becomes your reality. So start seeing yourself as that person you want to become. Act it so you can become it. Act it so you can become it. It is very important that you take the steps. They're very, very essential. Now we're going to go straight to uh, personality. Your personality is the combination of your qualities, abilities, and weaknesses. They are 12, yes, they are 12 abilities and qualities that are desirable. So you can just ask yourself which of them I want to have. I know the mastery of these things will help you have a positive personality. Let's consider them one after the other. Analytical abilities, communication skills, decision-making skills, discretion, in interpersonal skills, risk-solving skills, positive thinking, presentation skills, solving skills, team-building skills, innovative abilities, willing to learn. These are positive things that, um, um, the positive qualities and abilities that, that can help you groom your personality for the person that you would want to be. Another thing that you should consider are values. It is important that a person should create a value for himself. A person may hold and believe in different values such as honesty, sincerity, commitment, loyalty, comparison, coordination. So if you were to pick three most important value, values from this list, I don't know, which of them would you pick as top three? Which of these things would you pick as top three? Honesty, sincerity, commitment, loyalty, comparison, coordination. Please, I'd like to see your comments in the comment section. Let me hear, let me see. Which of them would you want to pick? The first three. We're talking about those 
um, things that um, a person should create for himself if he's trying to um, if he's trying to build his personality. We have honesty, sincerity, commitment, loyalty, comparison, coordination. Are we still together, please? Okay. Please, if you can hear me, could you type yes in the chat room? If you can hear me, please type yes in the chat room. All right, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Jesu Oreo. Thank you very much. Okay, so we proceed. It is very important that you have values, but then having your core values are very essential to building your personality. And that is why you need to start from somewhere. Habits is the next one. Habits shape your strength and, and abilities. A person may have different habits such as concern for time, seeking to schedule, planning, organizing, reading before retiring to bed, postponing things, TV viewing, late rising, making fun of others, or praying. These are different habits that most people have. And then you have to be sure what exactly is your habits. Consider them very carefully. It's important that we study ourselves to discover our habits. That way, it will be easy to access ourselves to know where you, you're doing well and where you need to improve on. Needs. Okay, we have discussed the Maslow theory of needs and then we understand that here in needs, we have the self-actualization, self-esteem, social needs, basic needs. We've discussed all of that in the uh, Maslow's theory of needs. So we go straight to can do attitude. Can do attitude. Okay, so here we have something that is really very important that we need to we need to discuss. You can do everything. Okay, that's the first that's the first thing in the can do attitude. You can do everything. Well, you see, in truth, as much as being positive is great. Here are some things you need to consider and be, afraid and be aware of, okay? We have to be aware that um, you need to have a can-do attitude, but then at the same time, not, not all at once. You can't do everything. You can't do everything. You can do everything if it's important enough. You can do anything if it's important for you to do so. You can do everything, but you may not be the best at everything. You can do everything, but there will be limitations. And you can do everything, but you need help. You will need help. You can't do everything all by yourself. Nobody is an island of knowledge. You need other people to help. And so you need help. Here are 16 best quotes on positive attitudes. Please look at the following quotes that help develop and stress on the relevance of making or of always having a positive attitude. The positive attitude is the seed of a positive result. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Don't complain. Whether a class is half full or half empty depends on the attitude of the person looking at it. There is a better way for everything. Find it. A positive attitude is not a destination, not a destination at all. It is a way of life. The most significant change in a person's life is a change of attitude. Right attitude produces right actions. If you really want to be happy, nobody, nobody, I repeat, nobody can stop you because you choose to be happy and happiness is your birthright. You will only go as far as you think you can go. The man with confidence in himself gains the confidence of others. The difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of will. The biggest mistake of all is to avoid situations in which you might make a mistake. A positive attitude is like a magnet for positive results. Our life is a reflection of our attitude. Attitude, not aptitude, determines your attitude. A positive thinker sees the invincible. 
feels the intangible and achieves the impossible. No man fails if he does his best. These are 16 best quotes on positive attitudes and you might just pick them one after the other to put yourself in that positive frame of mind you know, would help you to move forward, especially when you're feeling demotivated, discouraged, and you have a lot of setbacks. But then having a positive attitude and reflecting on these positive quotes can help you to do better. Okay, now we are on visualization and success. We're rounding up this class pretty soon. We're rounding up this class pretty soon. Visualization and success. Visualization is the process of creating detailed mental pictures of the behaviors you wish to carry out. You can use imagination to create these mental pictures. Imagination is the creative power of the mind. The secret to success is to, is to use your imagination to see yourself as the person you want to become. While visualizing, it is imperative to focus on the positive. As you visualize, notice and dispute negative thoughts with positive affirmations. You can use visualization to harness the power of the subconscious mind. Visualize yourself succeeding and you will succeed. Visualization is very powerful as a matter of fact. Many of us have the habit of making new year resolutions year after year. You will hear expressions like, this year is my year of prosperity. This year is my year of breakthrough. This year is my year of abundance. This year, I'll be a changed person. No more bets, Niger. <laughs> no more gambling of any sort. Huh? You will hear expressions like that. No more unprofitable activities. Well, I applaud those pronouncements because it is the first step to success. However, for some people, those verbal resolutions are as far as they can go. The big challenge is always doing as they said. They, they just don't know how to start. For some others, the big challenge is continuity. They start in January, but somewhere in March or in April, they have reverted back to that default setting. Please tell us, is this situation happening to you? If yes, tell us why it is so. Tell us why it is so. New Year resolutions are oftentimes not carried out on to the last. It's usually starts pleasantly and before you know what's going on, hmm, it just dropped off. <laughs> okay, all right, so, well, um, whatever your situation is, whatever the reason why you are, you are not um, going on with your resolutions, well, here is what we can do to, to succeed. First, remember that visualization without proper planning, deliberate steps towards making it work and determination is a total waste of time. Let me take that again. Visualization without proper planning deliberate steps towards making it work and determination is a total waste of time. So after making a resolution, visualize yourself achieving it. Make it real to yourself. After visualizing yourself with a woman of your dreams, work towards getting her. After visualizing yourself in a beautiful home or acquiring a lovely car, work towards getting it. After visualizing yourself getting the job of your dreams, re-strategize, reposition yourself and walk towards realizing it. Bottom line is visualization without proper planning, deliberate steps towards uh, making it work and determination is a total waste of time. We have said that before and it's important that we get to say it again because it's really very important. Overcoming fear of failure. Examine your thoughts and feelings that might be holding you back to discover ways to overcome them. And when you do that, you're fighting your fears. Failure is a part of success. It doesn't matter how many times you have failed in the past. It only matters that you are willing to try again. So you think failure. Realize that everyone, even highly successful people, fear failure. So what you have to do is accept your fears and face it. Move out of your comfort zone beat by beat. 
taking slow, small steps that are challenging. When you do that, you will expand your comfort zone. This is really very important to help you to go a long way into getting what you need to get done and doing what you need to get done. Now let's get to this part, believing in yourself for personal information. So what you have to do first of all is write down a list of the characteristics you would need to display in order to reach your goals. It can be that um, you need to be more hardworking it might just be that you need to be more disciplined. It might be that you need to be more determined, to be inquisitive, innovative, taking initiative, claim these characteristics by stating them, um, stating each, each of them for yourself in the affirmative. Now, leave your affirmation. Don't just say, I claim it. Don't just say, I am this or I'm that, and then you just sit back and do nothing. No, after claiming it, you have to leave your affirmation. Okay, so you have to do that by realizing that you already possess the qualities you desire. Give power to your affirmation by repeating it over and over until it becomes as familiar to you as your name. Say your affirmation while looking at yourself in the mirror. Be vigilant about other words you use to describe yourself. Use your affirmation when life tests you. Record your affirmation on the loop tape. These are things that you could um, do to overcome um, certain challenges that, that could uh, limit you or limit your, your performance. Now, there's, this brings us to uh, the self-evaluation. You need to find out the kind of person you actually are. Are you a self-motivated or non-self-motivated person? self-motivated person. A self-motivated person is someone who discovers his dreams and provides them with a, passionate, with a passionately felt life purpose and consistent motivation. Well, a non-self-motivated person has little sense of purpose, passion, or drive in their life. A self-motivated person commits to their job, to their dreams, visualizing the successful creation of the ideal future. Well, a non-self-motivated person wander aimlessly from one activity to another. A self-motivated person designs a compelling life plan, complete with purposeful long and short-term goals, while a non-self-motivated person tends to invent their lives as they live them. So ask yourself, in which of these categories am I? Am I in the former or in the latter? When you do this, it will help you know what exactly you need to do so that you can take, um, so that you can um, have the if, a positive change in your life and and move forward. Now let's do this last part. is the is a case study. We're considering a case study of Roger Williams. Well, so we can bring this case study home. I'm changing the name from Roger Williams to. Akpan Okon. I don't, uh, I, I, I don't know if anyone is bearing that name here, but it sounds Nigerian. That's why I'm using it. So Akpan Okon is an intelligent and sensitive human being. He is also a very skilled and talented worker. Lately, Akpan has been facing problems with his work as well as at home. In his relationships, he just doesn't seem motivated to do anything. He has lost interest in life and has nothing that he can look forward to in life. What do you think Akman can do to self-motivate? What should Akman do on a daily basis to keep himself motivated? You see, um, when, when, you, when you are thinking about a problem, I think it's also very important that we get to find a solution to that problem. Because when you're just talking about a problem and solution. You remain exactly where you are. Finding the cause of the problem is the right step towards getting the solution. Okay, so with, um, with this man, Akpan Okun, he needs to ask himself soul-searching questions to be sure what exactly he's getting right and what he's getting wrong so he'll be able to do the needful. In my case, I was able to find the cause of my weight gain and I had to take decisive steps to ensure that I get a positive result. Even if I have not achieved my 60 kg goal, 
but I am just very close to achieving it. <laughs> I'm very happy. And, um, and that's because I am doing what I think I should do and I've successfully overcome the, the hurdles of self-motivation. And I'm sure that when you do the same thing, you are also going to be happy you did so. So um, have you discovered the cause of your challenges? Are, you, are your challenges beyond your control or are there things you can do to change the situation? Whatever the case may be, seek help. Take active steps to change your situation. Think positively, speak positively, stay positive, and be determined never to give up. Now, in summary, in summary, what have we learned so far? I'd like us to share our comments in the chat room. We can. So be very important to know that we have learned something in this one and a half hour we've spent together one and a half hours spent together. What have we learned so far? Have we learned anything at all? Okay. I'd like us to share what we have learned so far in the chat room. I'm giving us time. What have we learned so far? Just drop one line or two so we know that we're together. Mr. Joseph, are you still with us? Mr. Egbagbara, are you with us too? Mr. Addison, are you with us? Mr. Abraham Thompson, are you with us? Please share your thoughts, please. What have you learned so far? We have come to the end of this class and um, this is the summary. If you have learned anything, it would be nice if you could share it, just a line or two. Okay, I see a hand up. All right, please, can you unmute Mr. Abraham Thompson? Yeah, thank you very much, Princess. And thank you for the class. It was a wonderful class. Uh, well, we learned a lot. I just, uh, I'll just talk. I just have some little contributions I wanted to chip in. The class was a, an interesting class. Uh, you talked about self-motivation and the need for self-motivation and self-motivation is a very important topic because if you are not motivated in life you may not achieve uh, what you have achieved now self-motivation